Hi, today in my classroom, I will be talking about abdominal distension. How to proceed in diagnosis of abdominal distension? How to deal with a case of abdominal distension? Now, whenever a patient reaches you with complaints of abdominal distension, how to proceed in the diagnosis? As soon patient reaches to you with abdominal distension, first you will have to decide whether that abdominal distension is focal abdominal distension or it is a generalized abdominal distension. I will be talking about generalized abdominal distension and in my next class I will talk about focal abdominal distension. So whenever a patient comes with abdominal distension which is of generalized type that means whole of the abdomen is distended then in that case first ask the patient about duration of abdominal distension that is for how much time that abdominal distension is present. If abdominal distension is present say since last 15 years 15 days sorry that means it is of short duration that you then you will say that it is acute abdominal distension and suppose if abdominal distension is long standing more than 15 days then you will say that it is a chronic type of abdominal distension so whenever a patient presents with acute type of abdominal distension that is within 15 days then in that case you will first rule out obstruction in the intestine. Intestinal obstruction usually pres present with generalized distension of abdomen that do the obstruction in colon. So when there is any colonic obstruction that then at, uh, in these patients the abdominal distension is generalized. So this generalized distension of abdomen, we will we'll see, as we'll say that it is due to intestinal obstruction, that is acute intestinal obstruction in acute cases. Sometimes in acute cases, distension of abdomen is because of collection of gases. This is because of indigestion. In cases of dyspepsia, there is collection of gas in abdomen as a result of which there is distension. So this distension of acute, acute variety is usually an emergency in cases of intestinal obstruction, that is colonic obstruction. Sometimes patient is constipated, suddenly gets constipated, that time also same P feature appear that is generalized distension of abdomen and that is also a type of obstruction of colon. So, whenever patient reaches you, first you decide whether it is acute or it is chronic. Usually patients with chronic distension of abdomen, when they reach OPDs, that distension is gaseous or sometimes it is because of collection of fluid. That means you will have to decide from history, that is while interrogating the patient, you will have to decide whether it is because of gases the distension or it is because of fluid. If there is accumulation of fluid, we call it ascites. If distension of abdomen is because of gases, then on leading questions and in history of patient, in history of presenting complaints, you will get features of chronic type of constipation. Sometimes features suggestive of irritable bowel syndrome. In irritable bowel syndrome, in cases of chronic constipation, usually there is generalized distension of abdomen. Sometimes in post-operative paralytic ileus, if it is prolonged, then it, in that case also there is chronic gaseous distension of abdomen. In endocrinal disorders like myxedema, hypothyroidism, in those cases there are because of sluggish motility of intestine, there is generalized gaseous distension of abdomen. So these are some of the causes of chronic generalized distension of abdomen. Apart from this, in depressed, depressed patients, in the patients of depression, 
there are there is sometimes generalized distension of top of, of abdomen because of decreased motility of intestine in cases of generalized anxiety disorders the motility is increased so in those cases you will not get features of generalized distension of abdomen in cases of depression you get generalized distension of abdomen because of gases similarly in some life stress if there is some life stress then in that case also because of mild depression there is generalized distension of abdomen due to decreased motility of intestine so these are few causes of chronic gaseous distension of abdomen apart from this if a patient is having distension of abdomen because of fluid that is accumulation of fluid in peritoneal cavity you call it ascites so if you are suspecting ascites <clears throat> in the patients of abdominal distension chronic abdominal distension because of fluid that is chronic ascites then you will think over first about the chronic liver disease because chronic liver disease is one of the causes of ascites collection of fluid in peritoneal cavity so one by one by interrogating patient in a proper way in a pleasant way you will have to give some time to the patient so if you inquire about the patient about chronic liver disease then you will come to know that that chronic distension of abdomen is because of fluid in the abdomen with the help of simply with the help of integration and proper step wise approach you can make diagnosis by about 80% just by talking to the patient in a case of chronic distension of abdomen if it is due to fluid and it is because of chronic liver disease one by one by asking the leading questions you can rule out different causes of chronic liver disease so in history first of all one of the commonest cause of chronic liver disease is alcohol so from history you rule out if patient is consuming alcohol or not number 1 number 2 second cause of chronic liver disease is virus hepatitis b virus hepatitis c virus these are the two viruses which cause chronic liver disease chronic damage to the liver and later on they lead to post necrotic cirrhosis in alcoholics also in the later stages there is cirrhosis so in post necrotic cirrhosis because of virus again there is accumulation of fluid so to rule out this viral infection how to rule out that viral infection hepatitis b and c are usually transmitted via parenteral route they are transmitted via blood transfusion they are transmitted via injection therapy they are transmitted by means of uh, or by the means of uh, sexual uh, procedures so you will have to ask one by one if the patient has been exposed to a patient of hepatitis b by injection by blood transfusion or by by sexual approach one by one you will have to rule out these different parenteral causes for hepatitis b and c usually in hepatitis b you will get features of chronic liver disease say after 4 or 5 years of exposure to hepatitis b virus while in case of hepatitis c virus the features of chronic liver disease that is collection of fluid in abdomen it may take about 3 to 4 decades so this is a slow acting virus hepatitis c virus apart from this chronic liver disease is also caused by various autoimmune and connective tissue disorders it is also caused by metabolic disorders one of the metabolic disorders is called hemochromatosis now this hemochromatosis is disorder of iron metabolism now this disorder of iron metabolism causes accumulation of iron underneath skin in pancreas in heart in lung and liver and when it accumulates in liver it will lead to chronic liver disease now this hemochromatosis is not common in india it is sporadic we can say than in india it is more common in scandinavian countries in european countries this is more common so these patients 
if you inquire from the patients they will be they will be belonging to some part of europe of the scandinavia region or their ancestors might be of that particular region so this is an inherited type of metabolic disorder these patients usually present with diabetes because the first part which is affected in body is pancreas iron will deposit in pancreas and patient will present with features of diabetes that is polyuria polyphagia polydipsia later on this iron will get deposited in heart and it will lead to restrictive cardiomyopathy it may get lost into liver and will lead to chronic liver disease and patient will present with abdominal distension patient will present with ascites if there is there are features of chronic dyspnea gradually progressive dyspnea breathlessness that is breathlessness and features of chronic respiratory illness that will suggest you of restrictive lung disease it is interstitial lung disease and this is because of deposition of iron in the interstitium of the lungs so this metabolic disorder hemochromatosis is very rare in india it is seen in some northern regions of india there are some autoimmune disorders which may cause destruction of liver these autoimmune disorders again these are almost inherited disorders so you will get family history of such autoimmune disorders in family suppose if there is history of rheumatoid arthritis in family this is a connective tissue disorder autoimmune disorder so in those families you may get features of autoimmune autoimmune uh, chronic liver disease if you are so if you are getting history of hashimotos disease this is again autoimmune disease in hashimotos thyroiditis again you may get coexisting chronic liver disease so these are the few causes of chronic liver disease which can lead to chronic distension of abdomen because of fluid so one by one you will have to rule out from history these different disorders disorders in various in the various uh, various parts of the body now whenever a patient reaches you and you have decided that it is because of say chronic distension of abdomen due to gases then this chronic distension of abdomen may be because of irritable bowel syndrome constipation variety there are three varieties of irritable bowel syndrome one is in which there is constipation chronic constipation in second variety there is recurrent diarrhea and in third variety sometimes constipation and sometimes diarrhea so in constipation variety of irritable bowel syndrome you will get generalized distension of abdomen because of gases now these patients of irritable bowel syndrome are again suffering from some life stress or they might be suffering from some anxiety disorder or from depression so usually they are suffering from psychiatric illness they are they are more more keen about their bowel movements they are more focusing their brain towards the bowel movements and because of this there is there, there is motility disturbance in the bowel and as a result of which there is constipation and accumulation of gases in abdomen and this distension of abdomen is generalized similarly in mixed edema there is generalized distension of abdomen of chronic type this is because of decreased motility of intestine so in these patients you will get features of hypothyroidism that is they will complain of cold intolerance they are they cannot tolerate cold as a normal person so these patients will have constipation chronic type of constipation and they will have history of increasing weight puffiness of face edema over body all these features of uh, hypothyroidism so like this one by one you will have to rule out different causes of chronic distension of abdomen now on examining the patient when you examine the patient in general examination one by one step wise you will examine the patient right from above to down in eyes when you will examine the eyes what things you will have to see especially in eyes now here in eyes you look for anemia for paler of conjunctiva 
if conjunctiva are pale and there is distension of abdomen that then it is suggestive of some chronic blood loss from gi tract and such type of chronic distension and which is causing chronic loss of blood from gi tract is because of chronic liver diseases because of portal hypertension there is blood loss from gi tract so look for pallor in conjunctiva in the second step you look for icterus that is jaundice over the bulbar conjunctiva this by this you will rule out chronic liver disease as a cause of distension of abdomen then you look to the condition of skin condition of skin whether there is over hydration that is there is edema or not then you look to the tongue in tongue again you will observe for anemia that is pallor of tongue you see for any cyanosis over the tongue cyanosis can be seen in chronic liver disease in hepatopulmonary syndrome because of type 1 respiratory type 2 respiratory failure you may get cyanosis over the tongue so you look for the cyanosis over the tongue then you look for the you see for the lymph nodes in neck cervical lymphadenopathy in cervical lymphadenopathy if there is there are lymph nodes in the neck then you must rule out the one of the causes of chronic distension of abdomen that is cox abdomen which is very common in our country so look for the lymph nodes cervical lymph nodes apart from apart from the tuberculosis that is cox abdomen other cause of the cervical lymphadenopathy may be because of metastasis of some carcinoma from abdomen towards the lymph nodes of neck then in the next step you go for examination of pulse and blood pressure in pulse and blood pressure sometimes in the cases of chronic liver disease the pulse pressure is wide and this is because of hyperdynamic circulation in chronic liver disease and this hyperdynamic circulation will give rise to various signs of white pulse pressure so you look for various signs of white pulse pressure over periphery white pulse pressure means systolic blood pressure is high and diastolic blood pressure is very low so the difference between the two if it is more than 40 then you will say that it is white pulse pressure so you look for white pulse pressure in chronic liver diseases in chronic liver diseases you may get white pulse pressure bounding pulse bounding pulse is there <clears throat> then over skin of chest you look for spider navy spider navy are red colored spiders now these spiders are usually present over anterior aspect of chest above nipples and posteriorly in upper part of back and over the upper arm here you can get the spider navy now this spider navy they disappear when you apply pressure in the center of the spiders these spiders are dilated arterioles so these arterioles they disappear when you apply pressure at the center with alpin head apart from this in skin you will get dupuytren's contracture that is contracture of this particular part of palm here there is development of contracture this is usually seen in alcoholic liver diseases so here you will get contracture like this palm is red usually again in alcoholic liver diseases palm is red these are the skin changes which can you can get in any chronic liver disease but it is more common in alcoholic liver diseases apart from this there is parotid enlargement enlargement of parotid glands in alcoholics then in general examination you will examine breasts and testicles for their atrophy because their atrophy is present in chronic liver diseases usually in alcoholic liver disease then examine for pedal edema because pedal edema again is present in chronic liver disease because of hypoalbuminemia and portal hypertension so like this in general examination one by one you will you will just examine 
in this step then you will take these steps for examination in cases of chronic liver disease after this you will move on to the examination of abdomen whenever you examine abdomen in cases of chronic distension of abdomen in those cases just fold the legs at knee flex the necks uh, legs at knee dis relax the abdominal muscles and then first you inspect whole of the abdomen when there is general you will see, you will see that there is generalized distension of abdomen you cannot say whether it is because of fluid or because of gases because without demonstrating by palpation on examination you look for veins over abdomen whether veins are prominent or not usually in flanks veins are prominent if there is portal hypertension you see the position of umbilicus whether it is normal shape of umbilicus whether it is normal it is inverted or it is deep if it is deep then we can say that the distended abdomen is because of fat in those cases umbilicus goes deep because of fat abdominal fat if it is inverted it is inverted because of excessive collection of fluid inside the peritoneum if there is gaseous distension in those cases usually flanks are more distended the central center part is more distended than flanks if there is fluid then in those cases central part is less distended and flanks are more distended in lying down position so like this on inspection you will observe each and everything over the abdomen you will also have to see the hernial sites hernial sites like umbilicus and inguinal region because of increase in pressure inside the abdomen sometimes there is just there is inguinal hernia and umbilical hernia so you look for the hernial sites then after that you will proceed to auscultation of abdomen now why you do auscultation of abdomen first because if you do auscultation at the end then in those cases on palpation you will stimulate the peristalsis and you will not be able to hear the bowel sound of the diseased abdomen in a proper way so you first auscultate the abdomen now as there are different auscultatory sites over the chest similarly there are different auscultatory sites over the abdomen so you start auscultating abdomen from left hypochondrium then you move to right hypochondrium then you go to right iliac region then left iliac region and then just right and left of umbilicus now when you auscultate over the left hypochondrium what you auscultate there there you auscultate for sounds in the stomach sounds in the stomach if there is suppose obstruction of pyloric opening then fluid and gases both accumulate in the stomach and you can hear succussion splash in that area if you if you just push the patient you ask him to sit up and then just push the patient back and fro, to and fro then you can hear, you can hear this splashing sound over the left side of abdomen then you move on to your stethoscope to right hypochondrium here you can listen for hepatic bruit hepatic bruit is a sound just like murmur it is a continuous type of sound and it is usually seen in hepatic congestion in various chronic liver diseases because of opening up of av fistulas in in liver because of congestion of liver you can hear this type of sound if there are any angiomas in liver again you can hear this type of sound over right hypochondrium then you move your stethoscope down to right iliac region in the right iliac region and in the left iliac region you will listen for bowel sounds then in the bowel sounds you see their intensity where their where their where their intensity is 
is low or it is of high, or the sounds are of high intensity they are loud or they are soft so you will have to assess intensity of vowel sounds and then rate of vowel sounds if vowel sounds are too loud and audible even without stethoscope then you will say with then it is usually named as bor bor rigmi so like this one by one you will auscultate different areas over abdomen two more areas which are left are right and left side of umbilicus here you will keep stethoscope and press down and here listen for arterial bruit renal arterial bruit which is usually present in secondary type of hypertension because of renal arterial stenosis in a young patient so these are the various auscultatory areas over abdomen which you will have which you will auscultate one by one in chronic distension then you move on to examination of lungs and in lungs in chest you will you will you will rule out by examination any evidence of collapse of the lower lobes and collection of fluid that is pleural effusion because this pleural effusion is very common in chronic liver diseases when there is massive ascites in gaseous distension of abdomen sometimes there is basal collapse so look out for the basal collapse by examination of chest in case of cardiovascular examination examination of heart you look for hyperdynamic circulation features of hyperdynamic circulation in heart examination of heart so one by one you examine all the systems of body because all systems are affected in case of chronic liver disease which cause abdominal distension examine for higher functions in nervous system in, in neurology examine for higher functions if there is chronic liver disease then in those cases sometimes higher functions are deranged and we call it hepatic encephalopathy you may get focal neurological deficits in case of hepatic hepatic encephalopathy so examine for whole of the nervous system so like this one by one you proceed for clinical examination of chronic distension of abdomen now how to investigate these patients of chronic distension of abdomen the first thing is routine examination in routine examination first advice cbc that is complete hemogram in complete hemogram you rule out any evidence of anemia rule out any evidence of thrombocytopenia low blood cell counts which are seen in hypersplenic syndrome of portal hypertension in cases of chronic liver disease apart from this you in hematological investigations you go for whole of the coagulation machinery because whole of the coagulation system gets deranged in chronic liver diseases after evaluating this in examination of blood you go for viral markers if you think that it is because of virus hepatitis b virus or c virus so go for viral markers in viral markers you will go for hepatitis b surface antigen antibodies against surface antigen envelope antigen antibodies against envelope antigen core antigen antibodies like this one by one you will investigate these viral markers before starting with therapy or antiviral therapy go for hepatitis b virus dna similarly in case of hepatitis c if you are thinking that it is because of this distension and chronic liver disease is because of hepatitis c then in that case you go for hcv rna antibodies against c virus if you think that the disorder is because of autoimmunity it is because of autoimmune disorder then in those cases you evaluate ana you evaluate asma lkm1 antibodies and asa antibodies these antibodies are usually done for detecting autoimmune liver diseases so like this 
one by one you will go for the blood investigations if you think and if you have demonstrated that it is gaseous distension of abdomen and if you think that from history it is hypothyroidism then evaluate for thyroid serum t3 t4 tsh free t3 t4 so these are the investigations for thyroid if you think that it is a cox abdomen distension is because of cox abdomen you go for diagnostic tb igra test then uh, on you will proceed further and go for ultrasonography of whole abdomen in ultrasonography of abdomen observe the size of liver any changes in the portal system size of spleen size of intestine whether the intestines are distended or not you go for peritoneal cavity assessment see any accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity and like this one by one you rule out various etiologies in ultrasonography or of abdomen also see for lymphadenopathy in cases of tuberculosis of abdomen and any malignancy of abdomen then further you will go for plain x-ray of abdomen standing because this is very important plain x-ray abdomen standing this is the basic investigation this should be done to begin with in plain x-ray abdomen you see for features of obstruction if there are any features of obstruction which are producing generalized distension of abdomen go get rid of those obstructive features by treating the patient if there is collection of fluid in abdomen you go for ascitic fluid routine microscopic and cytology if in ascitic fluid you can demonstrate features of tuberculosis you demonstrate it if there are any features of malignancy you demonstrate it if there are any features of chronic liver disease you demonstrate it i will talk about the details of ascites and examination of ascitic fluid in a different lecture after this examination of ascitic fluid you go for liver function tests if there is collection of fluid in abdomen and you think that it is because of liver then you go for liver function tests in liver function tests you do assessment of serum bilirubin indirect and direct flexion uh, fraction you go for assessment of gamma gt alkaline phosphatase serum proteins albumin and globulin both prothrombin time these are all the features of liver function tests they should be examined in detail in cases of chronic distension of abdomen if you think that it is because of chronic liver disease in cases of chronic distension of abdomen you go for ct scan of whole abdomen if you want to locate the site of obstruction of bowel or if there are any features which are suggestive of malignancy which is producing generalized distension of abdomen then in those cases ct scan of whole abdomen is advisable so like this one by one you will proceed in various investigations at the end i will talk about upper gi endoscopy in this investigation we see for any varices in gi tract with the help of upper gi endoscope demonstrate varices in the esophagus if there are any varices in esophagus which are bleeding and producing anemia now you can also demonstrate varices in stomach gastric varices if it is because of distension is because of chronic liver disease sometimes varices are also present in duodenum with the help of colonoscopy you can demonstrate varices in colon in anal region you can demonstrate for hemorrhoids so like this one by one you will do all these investigations in a case of chronic liver disease now how to manage a chronic liver disease this will i will talk chronic distension of abdomen how to manage it i will talk in different lecture